Hi guys, this is Katie Bunchoten, the CEO and founder of Certum Solutions, a business technology and accounting practice located in North Carolina. And we help small businesses scale gracefully. Today I'm going to teach you how to scale gracefully using the tip feature in QuickBooks Online. Now, before we get started, if you like this kind of content, make sure to like this video. If you like the general content we have on the Certum channel, subscribe. And that helps me know that we're being helpful to you. If you have different topics you'd like to hear about, leave me a comment. I check them all the time. I'll definitely respond. If I don't respond, then probably fell asleep because I'm tired right now and I need coffee. Anyway, moving on. Also, don't take your business advice from TikTok and YouTube. I believe strongly in the use of very close professionals that are knowledgeable to your business. Um, so make sure that when you're, I can speak in generalities, but make sure that you bounce this off of your advisors or you are knowledgeable enough in these fields in technology and accounting to where you know that this is the right step for you. Okay, with all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and jump into how to handle tips in QuickBooks, okay? First, you have to turn tips on. One of the questions I get on tips is, why does it not show in my profit and loss? Well, there is an easy answer to that, my friend. QuickBooks treats tip income kind of like it treats sales tax. They're not the same, but the treatment is kind of similar, okay? And let, what do I mean by this? So if you watch my sales tax video, I probably mentioned the fact that it is a trust tax. So sales tax is a trust tax. That money doesn't belong to you, okay? As the merchant, it belongs to the government, right? You are collecting that tax from your customer to pay it to the government. You are taking that tax and holding it in trust to pay to the government. Therefore, it's not part of your revenue. Therefore, it goes to your liabilities, okay? Because you took that money from your customer. It's not making you money. It's sales tax revenue that goes to the government. Um, I've seen people put this on their profit and loss. They think that because they're receiving cash that that's part of income, it's not. Um, I mean, if you put it on your expenses too, it'll wash out, but really it doesn't need to touch revenue at all. It's really money you're collecting on behalf of someone else that's so going to a liability account. Tips are similar, okay? You're collecting that money, but it's not your money. It's Clarissa's money or whoever it was that was at the register or that was in the kitchen or whomever that worked with that customer and got that tip, okay? So it's gonna put it to a liability account, okay? And to find that money, we're going to go through the process today of working through what that transaction looks like. If you have questions about any of this, please feel free to leave me a comment and myself or a member of our team will get back to you and help you figure this out. Um, so I was mentioning to turn on this feature, you go to your sales button and you go to your sales form content and you turn on accept tips. This is on, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and do a sales receipt. Why am I doing a sales receipt instead of an invoice? Uh, See, so you get to learn extra knowledge <laughs> while we do these videos because I go, if I was watching this, what would I want to know? Invoices are going to touch accounts receivable because you're typically not receiving that money right away. Um, you might be, but typically with an invoice, you're billing someone that has a house account where you're going to collect that money at a later date. So that's why you do an invoice. It's a, you owe me, not I owe you, you owe me, okay? With a sales receipt, this is what you're traditionally going to have when you have a point of sale up and you're ringing people out. Um, you've got, you know, if you have a full on point of sale, you're getting your Z tapes at the end of the day um, and you've got tills and the rest. Well, in QuickBooks, you still have that sales receipt function. Okay, uh, you can actually use QuickBooks as a very simple point of sale. There's reasons I don't recommend it if you have um, a high amount of uh, point of sale volume because you're missing out on a lot of goodies you get with a real point of sale. But if you just have one once in a while, it's a great way to kind of extend the use of your software. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pick customer and I'm going to pick, I really need more um, 
interesting names for my customers. But we're going to go ahead and pick our customer. We're going to pick our sales receipt. I'm leaving all many of the fields blank, but if this is your business, I would not recommend doing that because trash in, trash out. We all know this. Um, payment method for ease, I'm going to pick cash. If I pick check, it's going to ask me for a check number. You can do a credit card, but we don't have the credit cards turned on in this system. Typically, if you're receiving money into a till, I would have a till account set up here and then I would receive the money in that till or you can put it into your undeposited funds account which comes default with your QuickBooks. Every QuickBooks has an undeposited funds account. Then you make bank deposits later, um, which is really the ideal way of handling this. But for ease today, I'm gonna leave it that we're just bringing this into checking. That would not typically happen in reality. It's not going straight from your hand to your checking account. It's going from your hand into a till or a money bag or something else and then tonight, or tomorrow, you're gonna to take that money bag and you're gonna to go to the bank. That's why it's called undeposited funds. I got a video on that too, if you wanna watch it. Service date, we're gonna pick Thursday the 10th, because that's when I'm doing it. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick this. I'm gonna go ahead and put $100, okay? We've got it marked taxable. And I'm coming up and I'm buying my $100 book or my $100 whatever. And I'm going, I feel really generous today because you guys were amazing. I want to tip you 20%. I'm not going to tip you 20% on my $100. I'm going to tip you 20% on my $100 plus the tax, which is going to, funny enough, change the amount. But it's fine. So that's going to be about $21.65. I'm going to go tab. And it's going to change our amount. Okay. Oh, wait. That was shipping. Ignore me. Apparently I need coffee more than I thought. 21.65. Okay. So there you go. So you've got your tip in there. Actually, it didn't add tax. What, what am I thinking? An amount received. Okay. So this money is going to go straight to your employee, whoever's or Clar Clarissa up at the till. Okay. So I'm going to save and close this 21.65 that I got today. Yes. Let's skip our class today. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to this screen. This is another one of the reasons I don't recommend using QuickBooks as a point of sale. Okay. If you're using it as a point of sale, all your people are going to see all your information. So if you're comfortable with that, that's cool. You can turn on a privacy screen if it's just you. See, it's going to blank it out. But if somebody's got access to that information, they might have access to this. You can change this through roles and security permissions to a point and I digress, I need to get back on to what I'm trying to show you. Um, so I'm gonna show you where this report goes. As we mentioned before, you are not gonna go to your profit and loss. Nope, don't even think about it, don't do it. We're going to go to our balance sheet, okay? And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna make sure that this is for this month. Okay, because we received it today, so it's obviously not going to be in last month. Okay, and you actually at the end of this can set up a custom report to track your tips going forward. Okay, so I'm going down to my current liabilities, undistributed tips. Okay, I think I mentioned this early in this video. Just because those tips are coming through and hitting your liability account doesn't mean that that's potential that's not potentially taxable to your employee okay talk to your tax advisor about the tax implications of collecting tips i feel like if i would have planned better i could have had a really good rhyme that has a lot of t's to the tips and the taxes and the t -t 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 today anyway moving on so you will see that right today we've got our beginning balance we have our undistributed tips these are tips we've collected on behalf of our employees um, and we have not passed them out some of the things you could do maybe add a custom field for employee name or rep uh, so, or, so in your in the header of your sales receipt so that maybe we can run a report and we can say these are Clarissa's tips because that's got her name there okay or we can possibly customize it to add um, maybe the user that was using it today. Let's take a look. I don't see that as a possible column, but uh, oh, created by. So if you have your user set up, you can do created by and possibly use that. OK, we can have employee there. OK, you can have different ways to make sure you know whose tips they were. But then once you have it the way you want it, you can go ahead and hit custom tip report 
And you can save it in your group so that later on you can pull this report without having to follow down the little rabbit hole of going through your balance sheet, okay? Um, once you've done that, you can go to your report section, click on custom reports, custom tip report that Katie put together. I'd rather it not have the dates in it, so I can fix that later, but you get the idea. So that, my friends, is in a nutshell how you can follow the tip from when it's received by your from your customer straight to when you pass it out. Once you pass it out, you're just going to deduct it from that liability account. In theory, that liability account should constantly be zeroing out. If you have questions about this video or you just love us and you want to leave us a comment, I love all of it. Uh, please do, and I will make sure to get the next one out as fast as I can. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you for uh, being a viewer of our channel.